So, ladies and gentlemen, the curators, Martina, Joseph, and Yua, who is going to talk to them. Um, stage. So I just immediately kick over it. Why did you make this film? <laughs> Before saying this is really a beautiful film. I mean, it's hardcore, especially after the celebration. Congratulations and goodbye, uh, John Hale. Um, I can relate to this. My name translates into Johnny Likewise. Uh, you have on top. Why did you make this beautiful film? I guess the story begins uh, quite a long way back, in fact, from, um, in fact, uh, I would say a number of conversations with various people, both uh, students and uh, professors of the academy, so in a way it's kind of a circle coming back uh, to where it began, um, in around 2012, which um, I think was the year that, uh, maybe 2013, the more or less that time, um, I was invited here by uh, Rihanna um, and um, um, by, to take part in a, uh, the reviews of, um, uh, I think it was the social design course, presumably at that time, 2012, yeah. And the, at the time, uh, and that was an incredible opportunity to meet a lot of the um, tutors and also the students, it was also the time when I think more or less uh, I met Tamasha Freer and we uh, began together a project called Space Caviar. Um, a studio which um, still persists uh, in the form of um, productions of this kind. Um, and the, uh, in a way, I think this and a lot of the um, other things that we've worked on in the six years since then have been an attempt to understand what uh, design is today um, and how we can, uh, in a way, kind of understand what we mean by the word design. Uh, starting less from a sort of an etymological perspective or from the kind of a, the idea of design as the extension of a uh, familiar and well known um, series of actions and initiatives, um, but more to kind of attempt to develop mechanisms through which we could take a step back and uh, understand, primarily through the observation of human behavior, what um, it means to be a designer today. Um, and I think that. And so that was actually the through tomorrow afterwards that um, I met Martina, uh, and that began uh, a long series of uh, collaborations um, in through mostly through the medium of film, um, through which uh, we attempted to kind of understand what uh, what's kind of going on there in the real world outside of our little bubble of design. So yeah, I think that's uh, one explanation. Because you've, you've shot the film. Yes, I do. About the film, uh, we were really interested in understanding what was hidden behind the news that we could read from Xinjiang. Like uh, the hardware, of silicon piling of hardware, and uh, like um, actually Wired showed it like a really fanta fantastic like documentary, short film. Uh, but we were actually really interested in understanding like going in the field and somehow um, spend quite a lot of time to um, immerse ourselves like in what was there. And that somehow um, the, the film itself like is an attempt to it for the extent that it is possible for um, the band the banter of the language and also the knowledge of the culture itself. Um, we work like uh, regardless of this film itself. Like we work with Joseph like a lot in field research. That's what we like to do. So the the, the three film we did together is actually three different ways of uh, emerging uh, into. I mean, like the process of the research the, the, of the research is totally immersed in the context, in the environment, in uh, digital communities, the latest in Minecraft. Blockchain, and here it was a uh, bit, bit fire. <laughs> um, it was Shenzhen ecosystem, um, and I think like personally, is what I enjoy the most. That's what I see the value of uh, 
of the research and design, like trying to immerse like and observe mostly and through observation and also like a series of observation, repeating observation, repeating observing the same characters only to get like one specific good shot or a good shot sometimes. And so that's that's the process itself. And uh, then of course there are reasons why we choose this context and why design and research is relevant uh, in Shenzhen itself and that's like a conversation we can start. But uh, that's a bit um, small introduction about uh, the film. How do you connect this to the invention of the CD here in Eindhoven? <laughs> well, I, I actually I, I was really happy to hear that. <laughs> because many things have been invented um, in a totally different way in Shenzhen market, electronic market. And some of the products that are next door is, are in fact like really good examples. Um, I do maybe have a question first, in order to not say something wrong. Right. Was the CD invented by who? Philips. Philips. So it was. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like the, the, the biggest. How do you translate that then back to Shenzhen? What's there? What's uh, beyond audio, light, telecom? Because what the fuck was happening in all of these places? It's, it's insane. Yeah, that, that was the, the biggest question, Joseph, and I yeah. continue asking myself while trying to make a little bit of a it's a kind of a pro professional response from the, the jury. It's really nice to not know, because there's no subtitles here, there's no wall text in the exhibition, so you have no clue what you're actually looking at, watching, trying to kind of understand, which is excruciating, because it's really tiresome, but it's really nice because then you kind of get into it. At least I think that's one of the uh, things that we were really kind of going backwards and forwards on almost until last night, was whether to how, whether to explain, essentially, and it's, I think, a conundrum in, uh, it goes beyond, obviously, this exhibition, it kind of goes, beyond, it goes to um, a, a question also, from the didactic question about how do you teach design, how do you learn design, what sort of an environment will produce an interesting, um, will form uh, the, the, the skill of observing the world and learning. And in the end, we thought that maybe uh, kind of producing a sort of a almost quasi-mystical um, environment, um, an imaginary environment, which is completely real. I mean, it's all just observing. It's nothing is staged or in any way, um, uh, it, it, a lot of it really is just uh, about waiting at the right moment and capturing a certain action and understanding. Uh, but this, uh, the result that comes out of that is um, something that allows you to observe I mean, the kind of the, in a way that the uh, hope is that this uh, provokes also a different kind of understanding of these objects that you see on the walls um, and kind of seeing them, the environment they come out of and the sort of actions and uh, the, the, all of the, sort of the chain that leads to their existence one can understand how intricate, how, well, I think it's something we take for granted is the uh, degree to which the environment influences the kind of objects that are produced. So the way that this whole project is really not so much about the products or even, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's articulated through an observation of human behavior, but actually the point that we're really trying to get at is that in order to produce, to rethink the uh, act of designing, you also need to rethink the environment, the sort of the platforms which articulate that design. And, and the marketplace, the Bay marketplace, which is what you saw is really a platform for design. In fact, it wouldn't be possible without it. 
without it. And, that, and the, the, the kind of things that are produced there and its, its global dominance wouldn't be possible um, without the, this sort of extraordinary density of network of people. Because what, what's the end game for them? Is it to sell products? Or is it... Is it I mean, it, it, in, in its most basic form, I think it's no different from the local green uh, vegetable market. It's, uh, it's actually kind of incredibly touching to see how dispassionate they are about what they're selling or making or whatever. There's, no, there's very little emotional attachment to it. At the same time, there's incredible gratification. They really enjoy the, the, the act of making these things and of selling and buying and so on. So it's, in a way, it's kind of a, a mix between uh, the instinct of survival and the instinct of creation. Um, and there's something really magical in this um, in this environment. Uh, but also acquiring slowly uh, professional skills. So that's one one of the nice things. Like uh, growing in a market like that, technology is not anymore something called a fire. Components are not disconnected. It's like really like growing. <coughs> so, so there is really this image which I really like, is like digging into components. I don't read that as a digging into like dry components. It's actually approaching the component as if it's rice. As like um, development of different skills, mm -hmm. which uh, comes from different materials. <coughs> and this is uh, something you can observe in any corner. So in the same way like a beautiful flower shop at the market, this like is made by cables, then of course there are different implications, you can read it in a different way, we can take like the many directions uh, into the conversation, but um, in terms of what is the, like this, the audio, uh, the, the, the telecom, uh, I think you, the can, yeah, you can say it in different ways, there are like this, uh, as Joseph also mentioned, the spaces, the spaces are interconnected, there is the home, the factory and the market, Without this, the coexistence and the proximity of these three results would have been different. And then there are like other more social base uh, ingredients, which is the family, the friendship, and the really like um, constant network. So the phone itself is like this uh, WhatsApp overloading the everyday life, like the private life. In which I'm sorry. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, seeing this made me think of the saying, it takes a village to raise a child, and it just feels like it takes a market to develop design or develop a skill. And um, how does this scale up, or how do, have you, yeah. do you have any sensibility of kind of how that, at what scale does this function, and could this be then, could, how do we learn here, or how could these people learn from that? Uh, this is a super interesting question, like, being there, like, long, long time, uh, six, six months. One of my questions continuously repeating in my brain was, can this exist somewhere else? Can this actually be possible or special for only this social, political context? And this, I don't have an answer to that. I just know that there are, like in this context, there are many attempts to take out design and the meaning of design and especially this like, really, like, word that we really like is innovation. Innovation, Which, yeah. yeah, like uh, that can mean many things and different scales. So, like, this is a super interesting question, and you can really answer in different ways. So, you can answer saying what are actually the factory going now. So, I can say, okay, like uh, Vietnam or Philippines or Africa, or you can also s looking at in a way of uh, how design is uh, is evolving and say what actually from this market can we learn and apply it. So it's more like a methodology, a structured methodology, or a format. Yeah, sure. Just to add one thing to that, so one of the things that um, I think we were most um, intrigued by or shocked by in spending some time there was the degree to which things that we conceive, consider unbelievably radical are uh, completely normal. Like, in a way, you could consider the whole of the these um, huge buildings that sort of constitute the marketplace as enormous hacker spaces. Yeah. And the sort of the, the daily, um, whereas in the West the hacker space is sort of this um, very um, ideological thing that has uh, occupies a very specific position, it's almost like a manifesto of design and so on. 
there it's just completely spontaneous and it's just complete normality and it's completely shocking that anybody could find this interesting to them. And that was one of the things that was, the, the, the fact that we could find all of this interesting was the thing that they just couldn't, the people of the market couldn't really get their heads around. Including the muscle memory. It, it really, I mean, I have to think of a normal market as well as kind of going through the apples or tomatoes to see which one is the right one. Kind of going through all the different uh, products or, or cables just to find what fits where and also the kind of the little components with the magnetism or whatever they were doing trying to do. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the things that's super interesting is these that the, the, the I mean, this is also yeah. a very Chinese um, way of, of of solving problems is just finding the absolute just chopping a piece off the side of your cat's box to sift through separate transistors from yeah. some component from another and there's an unbelievable pragmatism in the um, in the culture which is uh, is incredibly beautiful um, but the thing that's interesting is that it's um, it kind of, that operates at every scale, really. And you could really imagine this um, becoming, I think, I mean, for, certainly for Eindhoven, a really interesting model of uh, how one could structure an entire city around the design process through the kind of implantation of certain activities or certain platforms. Looking at it uh, more critically from maybe environmental point of view, uh, human rights issues, what are the things that um, you found trouble or kind of disturbing and troublesome about this? Mm. Uh, we have to say that Shenzhen is actually um, around in 2010. Uh, there were like many, many human rights movements. <coughs> there is also a nice publication um, about uh, interviews to workers, which is because there's some ch children working in there as well. Some young children are helping out as well. Yeah, this is Australia's Saturday. That's how I want to clear it out. It's yeah. Saturday. Kids go to school, and on Saturday they go to the work and to help the family as much as I always help my mother. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Actually, there is like a, a care. Then, of course, if you go in the in the countryside, it's different. But Shenzhen, it has this. Um, it's like a urban jungle. Somehow, there are like some habits that come from the countryside, but still like they take place in a city. So it's like a developing, underdevelopment somehow. Also the behavior of you, you leave the city itself. Um, um, it's also Blade Runner without the rain. <laughs> <laughs> it's a slightly well. Yeah. But um, there are some things that are annoying in terms of health, like the hair in the market is... Uh, I mean, anybody can experience that. Yeah. You just need to go there. And, and, also, and also, the kind of uh, sorry to interrupt you, the paradox of sustainability, because it kind of it feels on a service level that oh, this is actually really sustainable. They they use and reuse everything. It's very open source. But then when you see the packaging and the plastic and and, and kind of how they distribute everything and the kind of the un Amazon like un Steve uh, or Bezos like uh, distribution model, it's kind of unsustainable um, to the bottom. How does that function? I think this is the, the couple of points here that's really interesting to kind of unpack a little bit because I think they reveal the extent to which we are biased by our own sort of context. And one of these is the, um, I've, well, to address the last one, those are things that are essentially being made for us. So if we're buying electronics, they're going to come from somewhere and they're going to be packaged and they're going to be shipped and so on. It's like, uh, you know, um, complaining about. Um, animals being killed to go to, 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 to when you eat sausages. It's, it's, it's we are ultimately the kind of the last mile of this food chain, the bottom of this food chain. And so that, that is actually simply providing, well, I mean, not just to us obviously, but to the world a service that is kind of this insatiable demand for the products is being satisfied by them. Um, and so I don't know to what degree we can unload onto them the responsibility for any sort of any of the practices that lead up. On the contrary, I think that the um, when you see them sifting through the, um, the components, and this is hopefully the next stage of the research, they, those are actually components that come from e-waste plants um, that have been, or, well, not only, but partly, I mean, part of the, uh, certain, certain parts of the marketplace are entirely devoted to it's the kind of discoring when it breaks, breaks to, yeah. basically. Yeah, and then, and then separating those components, which happens in a different place, and then they're being shipped back in bags of sort of mixed items, some of which are taken out with magnets or whatever system, 
it's, it's doesn't re that's not like where everything comes from, but there is an incredible um, ability to find kind of economies of uh, recycling and of reintroduction, much more than you would imagine, um, in fact. And the third is, I think, the question of social sustainability and the sort of presence of children and so on. Um, I mean, it's not, yeah, it's very difficult to make sort of blanket judgments, but I didn't see, uh, I didn't, had no reason to perceive a less balanced or less wholesome um, family structure or society there than anywhere here. In many ways, I would argue the contrary. There was an incredible integration of there was something incredibly beautiful about the children learning to pack tape and, and uh, being really part of the sort of the economy of the place where they live and the day-to-day uh, the -day activities of their families. Is there anybody in the room? We have two minutes left, or maybe one, and with a question that we haven't addressed. Yes. Mr. Bosch. Uh, every time when I'm looking at the text I of my iPhone, I'm reading Made in China. This is supposed to be a different China than the China I'm showing. No, no. Actually, actually iPhone assembled uh, the. I mean, it's another phase. Or, I mean, they could coexist. Um, iPhone assembled the, uh, it's, I, Apple assembled the iPhones in Foxconn. It's like one of the biggest, uh, actually, it's Taiwanese. Yeah, in, based in Shenzhen, um, uh, with Chinese workers. Um, and what we, I mean, we decided to only put one, one scene, like just at the end, the factory. And uh, the factory is really small. It looks like an it looks like, like an atelier or like a small, really small, small assembly line. I think the workers there were around 12, which is a different phase of factories and what potentially factory can mean here. And uh, the products that we that we show in the other in the other room, they are from those technology of factories, which is more like a. Uh, laboratory slash assembly line slash um, um, it's like research on how to make it better. That's what the last two guys were doing, like observing and observing the same board and the board is thick. The, the, we need more welding, etc., etc. So it's a different phase, yes, phase. Okay. And. Um, and those are the factories which are like increasing, increasing in number. And that's where the question also is like, is that actually sustainable? And how long they can survive? And uh, how they are linked each other. That's what was interesting also, how they are link each other in order to have like a final product, which can be not sustained in terms of research and in terms of making, in terms of assembling by one, only one laboratory. So that's where the, the, the factory becomes a totally different shape, which is like a network of small factories, of small laboratories, which are linked, yeah, linking each other to where the products come from. I think I opened a can of worms because more people have questions. Um, Jose Martina will be here. Uh, we have to wrap up, but I have one question before everybody leaves. Could you want to lead through the exhibition? And uh, you want to see the exhibition after you've seen the film. So how do you, um, hope all of us here see the exhibition after having seen the film. What do you, what do you hope for? Uh, I, th I would say that you see people instead of seeing objects. That's the, the point. Really. Something I would like to add is that the objects selected, they were the eats of the 2016. And like, like the finished the, products. Yeah, the finished products. The ones that were sold in the market, the most famous one. Which is this nice phenomenon of uh, when a product becomes famous, like the lamp we are around, it starts to be changed and uh, modified and re put in the market, and many others are interested in continuing the evolution of it. So that, that's the. They're really like memes in uh, object or product form, in a way. And they come and go, and the factories retool and just kind of take on the next, whatever appears to be the next thing. They kind of take a gamble on retooling for the certain product, and then if it explodes, they make a lot and they improve it. That's a whole other chapter of that <laughs> conversation. Next time. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.